kind of talk about how you came up. I know you're from Chicago, but I know a lot about you, but a lot of fans, they may not. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm from Chicago, the south side of Chicago. Um, you know, growing up, you know, I, I stayed. I was always at a park somewhere playing basketball. Um, the game of basketball kind of came from my dad. You know, he, he always – it's crazy you talked about the guard stuff or whatever. Uh, you know, my dad always has had this saying, like, you know, just don't be one one dimension. You know, right. all bigs. He understood. My dad understood. You know, a long time ago that the game was gonna change, um, and um, he always told me, man, don't don't be one dimension. You know, don't be one dimension. So uh, that just kind of stuck with me. And ever since then, man, I just like growing up. I always did. I never went to a big man workout until high school. Never. So like. I was always working out with guards. Um, I was always doing, you know, guard drill work and working on ball handling, doing little stuff like that, um, trying to prepare myself. Obviously, in, you know, in the middle of that, you know, I was trying to lose weight. And then, you know, on top of that, you know, being in Chicago, I was trying to find safety, you know what I'm saying? So um, it, it was it was a lot, you know, kind of growing up, but um, you, don't, you don't always get put in the best situations, you know what I mean? With, the stuff you can't control, but you gotta, you know, rock with the with with the cars you do you deal with. But um, I, I think more so is my dad, man. He he kind of instilled that in me, and you know that's kind of been my mindset, trying to trying to expand more and more. Um, I come from a, a big, a huge family, man. I got family all over the place. Um, you know, I don't have any brothers and sisters, but you know, my cousins, all my every single one of my cousins is my brothers and sisters. So. Um, Huge family dude, man. Like, family is everything. Um, I mean, I, I feel like that's that's pretty much uh, – that pretty much sums it up. But, um, like I said, man, I, I come from a athletic family, um, very family-oriented. Um, I don't know. My, my background kind of kind of made me, you know, being from Chicago, uh, it's like it almost feels like, you know what I'm saying, you always got to find a way out. And then not, that's not just for me. That's for any, you know, Hooper that's came out of Chicago. But, uh, you know, just because of all the violence and stuff, man, it, it's tough, you know, trying to find, you know, somewhere safe to play, uh, whether that's at a park, at a gym. Um, but, you know, this basketball is just something that I've always enjoyed, man. And it always got me away from all the violence and, you know, kept me out right. the street. Stuff like that. Obviously, you know, my, my mom did a great job of, you know, keeping me keeping me away from stuff like that. Um, but, you know, like I said, basketball just I was free and it was I was having fun while I was doing it. So um, that's kind of why I stuck I stuck with it. So. No, I feel that. I mean, I, because I mean, we both had we both probably had friends not long, no longer with us, friends as incarcerated, yes. friends that didn't make made a right turn. We made a left turn. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. now for you to be able to, like you said go through that, because I mean, I know what it's like to be able to go through that, keep your head straight, to be the one that made it out. I mean, that's a lot of pressure that a lot of general fans don't understand, they don't know about. So, you know what I mean? You When you playing a game, you may not be playing it in your head for just Purdue for you. That's for the, for me, for me, it was for Devonte Haney who was killed. You know what I mean? It was for Montez Brooks who was killed, who was shot and ultimately died. You know what I mean? So. It's one, it's one of those things where you're not just doing it for yourself at that point, because you are one of those people at the point where a lot of people don't look at it, but if you look at the statistics, you maybe be a chosen one that was chosen to make it to where you made it to. Right. You know what I mean? And so when did, um, I said I have to say that's what's up though. <laughs> when did paint, when did paint come in the picture? When did you meet paint? Cause I remember um, I was at Purdue when I started hearing the buzz about, you know, you in high school, whatever, whatever, but. <laughs> How was that for you? What was that when you met Paint? How did you know Paint was the one, the, not the one for you, the coach for you? You know what I mean? Was there any other schools in your recruitment? How was that? How did a kid from Chicago, Illinois get to Purdue? You know what I mean? Man, I, for, well, for one, you know, my, my main goal was to be close to home. Like I said, I'm a family dude. Um, I always wanted to be close to my family. So I kept that in mind, you know, throughout my recruitment like this. Um, you know, obviously starting off, you know, I got my first offer from Michigan State. Um, no, I got my first one from Xavier. Then uh, my second was from Michigan State. You know, I was always getting comparisons to Draymond Green with the, you know, the passing and stuff like that. You know, I, I was always getting those comparisons throughout high school. 
Um, you know, and I, and I always wanted to, I was, I was going to take my career to Michigan State. But, you know, my mom, she told me, Trey, like, just wait it out, be patient. You know, it's a, it's a big decision. Um, so, you know, my junior year, Coach, Coach, he came in my sophomore year, really. I think it was Coach Owens. Um, I, I forget what school, he, what school he's at now, but. Miami, Ohio. Yeah, Coach Owens and uh, and Coach Gary, Coach Greg yeah. Gary. Um, yeah, they, they both they both started looking at me. Um, you know, then Coach B got in the picture, and I finally met Paint my junior year. Um, you know, obviously, my junior year, I was kind of making progress as far as, like, recruiting. You know, I was getting more, more and more schools looking at me. Um, then Pink comes to my school, shows up at a game. Now I'm, <laughs> I see him sitting front row. I'm like, man, I can't have a bad game. Not in front of the head coach. I can't have a bad game. <laughs> um, no, nah, man, but it, it was it was a great experience, man. He, he showed up. Um, you know, Coach B came to my house. Uh, you know, they were just, you know, they they really showed, you know, that they wanted me at Purdue. You know, and, and that was one of the main reasons why I went. Um, you know, I, I had been to – the crazy thing is I had been to Michigan State. I had been up to Michigan State about six, seven times, you know, playing open, <laughs> playing open gym with the guys. Uh, Xavier, I've been there maybe four or five times, you know, playing open gym with the guys, just visiting. I've been to Purdue twice. Dang. That's what's twice. That's dope. So, like, so, like, I just – you know, I just kind of, I, I kind of got that that home feeling. You know, yeah. my, my first game at Mackey, man, when they when they cut them lights off <laughs> and they do the, uh, they, the announcer do the starting lineups, man, I, I just thought that was yeah. the, the best thing ever. You know, and I, I took that back to my high school. So I made, yeah. them, I made them turn the lights off before we came out for every game after that. That's what's up, man. <laughs> man, it was just, it, it just felt like home. So, you know, my mom was... My mom was happy with it. You know, my dad was happy with it. Um, like I said, it wasn't too far from home. It's about an hour, 30, two hour drive, not too bad. Yeah. Um, but all the players, man, I, after playing open gym with them, you know, they they always, you know, made sure it felt like home. So, um, you know, I think that's what every player kind of looks for throughout the recruiting process, you know, just somewhere where they're comfortable. Um, not so much where everybody, you know, kissing your butt, but, um, yeah. Coach Painter has a sense of, you know, kind of tough love, and you need people to, to kind of be on you. Um, sorry. Pretty good. You need people to kind of be on you like that, um, you know, in order for you to grow as a person. So um, I think that was more so my what, – what had to do with my decision, you know, who, who was going to push me, you know what I mean, and not tell me, Oh, you're doing good. You're doing good. Sometimes you need to hear that you're doing bad, or you need to fix. It. You know, and Payne Coach will tell you that. <laughs> man, he'll tell you that in the, in the heartbeat. Um, you know, one, one thing I always appreciated about him is you know, his, his honesty, man. Um, you might not want to hear it all the time, but you know, he's always honest with you. And at the end of the day, you know, he's he's always got your back. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, oh, no, that's real. He always got your best interest at heart, and he just wants you to be. Um, he wants you to be a successful human and more than to me, to me, he wants you to be a successful human more than he wants you to make all your free throws. I mean, yeah. He wants you to be, obviously he wants you to be a functional basketball player to be on the court. Obviously mm -hmm. he wants you to make your free throws, but he really cares about the person behind the player. To me, it's always felt like. And then for you, for you now, you in this role, like you said, Purdue felt like home. You transitioned into Purdue. You went from wanting to go to Michigan State to him a game winner in Michigan State. You know what I mean? Man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Let's talk about let's talk about that tonight. I know now it's a little different playing on the road in the Big Ten, but talk about going into some of those arenas. What's the craziest arena you, you that you play in? You know what I mean? Where is the fans the toughest? Or even I mean, because even though maybe it's not the fans, maybe it's just the arena itself. What's some mm -hmm. of your favorite arenas to go to? Uh I, I would say the most the most exciting one, you know, when, when fans were allowed was definitely the Braves, um, Michigan State. Um, I think that was the most exciting one. You know, when they scored their first bucket, they throw the towels up. Yep, yep. Stuff flying around, man. Like, it's crazy. Um, but uh, that's probably the most exciting. Um, it's it's hard to, to kind of go in there and get a win. You got to be, you know, really good. You got to be a really good team to win, to win there, man. And yeah. um, I think that's probably the best arena to play in other, other than Mackey. 
Yeah, what's it like playing at Mackey in front of 14,000 when it's full? You get a big stop, a big bucket. What's that like? Man, it's it's insane. I, I can't – It's it, you can't even explain it, man. Like, <laughs> you feel like – you feel like you in an NBA game. Like, it's, it's so <laughs> – it's so heartwarming, man, when you do something right on the court and everybody just cheering you on. Right, you get it, right. Going, everybody going crazy. Um, and I just, I think the best feeling was, like I said, going back to my visit, you know, just sitting in the bleachers. I, I'm I'm looking around like, yo, these people going crazy. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the paint crew, man, they all into it. You foul out. They count. They watching your steps. Oh, man. <laughs> like. Man, it's it's insane. I can't even explain it, but um, you know, I feel I feel real sorry for you know kind of the freshmen. You know, they haven't got to experience that. Um, you know, thank God I did, but um, yeah. it's it's an unbelievable feeling. No, nah, no, nah, that's what's up, Trevion. I mean, everything you're saying makes a lot of sense to me. From being as a player, I played in there. But just a few more questions. A couple of questions from Twitter. What's something that? you've learned from kind of your underclassmen to your upperclassmen year. So maybe you learned about yourself, learned about paint, learned about the team. What's something that you've taken from your underclassmen to your upperclassmen? Um, from my underclassmen to my upperclassmen. Besides, um, I mean, anything you've learned just kind of through the transition to college basketball, that if someone was listening right now that is coming in next year as a freshman, what would you tell them? That will kind of get them over the hump a little quicker. Man, just, just cherish everything. You know, cherish your time in college. Um, don't take anything for granted. You know, obviously, you know, COVID happened, but this, like, disregarding that. You know, you just never know. Um, you know, everything moves so quick when you get there. You know, like I said, I feel like I was a freshman yesterday. And I'm a junior now, so that's real. Man, it's it's a. Uh, it goes fast, man. So, like, I, I, if I had to give any advice, it would just be, you know, to cherish, you know, cherish your moments in college and, and really take take what you can get, you know what I mean, and, and put your best foot forward. Um, like I said, it goes really quick, man, and you just you just never know what's, what's going to happen. You know, we, we didn't know our season was going to get canceled like that last year. You know what I mean? That's real. That's real. Freshman year, we didn't know we was going to make it to the Elite Eight. But, you know, things happen and, you know, it's so much going on. So I would just say, you know, ch just cherish every moment you get, you know, in college, man. It's it's, it's fun. Like, it's, it's, you got to be excited to to want to be out there, to want to practice, to want to, you know, watch film, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, Coach Painter actually just talked about it, man. He was saying just be be excited about being here. You know what I'm saying? Mm, uh, a lot true. of guys – a lot of guys was just – uh, was was kind of getting down on themselves for you know previous games and you know obviously you got me and all the other guys trying to encourage them but you know Coach Paint put us all to the side he said man be excited about being here you know if it was he, he always says if, if it was easy everybody can do it man That's what's and, and he says that all the time he he says he sounds like a broken record a broken record but I think I think that statement is a hundred percent true. You know, if, if it was easy, everybody could do it. And you got to realize coming in that everybody, you know, there can always be somebody else in your position. You know what I'm saying? And you just can't take it for granted. So, Nah, man. Hey, man, I really, really appreciate your answers, man. That's what's up. You can tell you've become, I mean, from the beginning of the season, when I remember we talked on Zoom to now, it's been just a couple months. And I can see a lot of growth and kind of just – where you are mentally, even the way you started the season, I don't think you started how you wanted to, but the way, I mean, I've seen guys not start the season how they want to and kind of never catch up. I, so the way for you to kind of get where you are now, keep going forward and to be able to have this level head about everything, man, I, I'm look, I'm such looking forward to March. I'm looking forward to, not to say next season, but I'm just looking forward to your career, man, 100%.